Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Gabriel Gaprod. So, I had this crazy idea of making electricity without any textures at all, and today we are going to see a pretty cool shader that creates procedurally generated electricity without any textures. And I think that's actually pretty nice. This is the end result that I've been showing you, and it's actually not that bad. So, all of these electric variants are available on my Patreon page, by the way, links in the description if you want to check that out. I also recently published my first Udemy course, and if you want to get into visual effects, I think that's the way to go. Links in the description, by the way. Alright, so with that being said, let's see how we can do this. So, for this one, I use an unlit graph. Since it's an effect that doesn't need light, normal maps, smoothness, and all of that. And it's a very lightweight graph. Once I was in Shader Graph, I knew this would need to be a transparent surface, and double sided would come in handy. The alpha clip threshold is something we don't need for this shader, so I set it to zero. And now, one thing that I absolutely need is a color property that is going to be set to HDR mode with white and full opacity as default. From here, I was going to need a node that procedurally generates our electricity, basically a noise node. So I decided to go on with a simple noise node. So the electricity is very likely going to move, so I created a time node that is going to be multiplied by a vector 2 called electricity speed. And for the noise to move, I decided to use a tiling and offset node. Connect them like this. I also added another vector one to control the simple noise scale. Ok, so the fundamental idea of this shader is that we remap this grey noise to have a black and white texture. And to do so, I'm going to say that the zeros are going to be minus 10, which is black, and the ones are going to be 10. And I got this very crisp noise texture with black and white. Now, the way I use this to my advantage and to obtain the electric lines is by distorting the UVs of a white texture. But, like I said, I don't want to use any texture for this shader. So fortunately, in the procedural section, besides the noise, we have shapes. And if I selected a rectangle, and then connect these to the UV input of the rectangle, I got these crazy lines moving around. And this will be the procedural electricity, basically. And another cool thing is that if we increase or decrease the height of the rectangle, we can have control now over the thickness of the electricity lines, which is really useful. And for that I added a vector one to control that parameter. Now this is all looking good, but as soon as I applied this to a plane, I got this pretty boring texture, nothing special. So what I realized at this point is that I need another simple noise that will give the sensation that it's distorting the other one. And that was as simple as selecting these nodes and copy-paste them, basically. I just added another vector 2 to control this noise speed, which actually needed to go to the opposite direction, to create a better effect. And then from here all I had to do was add the two simple noises together, just like this. Now at this point I knew I needed a power node to control the amount of noise it passes, basically. And this turned out to be very useful because this parameter would control the electricity amount, basically. Which is quite cool. So now, I just needed to add color to this shader and basically, I multiplied this output with the color 
and since I knew I wanted to control the color with the particle system, I also added a vertex node which is going to be multiplied with this. And then all I needed was to connect it to the color and to the alpha input. Just like this. Ok, so everything was going well and at this point I found the electricity to be looking pretty cool. And I still didn't use any external texture for this, which is nice. The only thing I noticed at this point is that I was missing a mask texture, so I don't have these hard edges all around. But normally I actually use a texture to create a mask, so I had to come up with a pretty unusual way of doing it. And I tried many things actually, I even used this ellipse from the shapes, which wasn't that bad, but I was still having these hard edges. So I tried many many more things, but then I came up with this brilliant idea to use the Polar Coordinates UV node. Which, if I split this node, I could use the X channel to get this exact texture. And this texture was actually the opposite of what I wanted, but all I had to do was use a 1- node to invert it and to get this great mask. And it was pretty cool because I could control the size of the mask. Then I multiplied this with the rectangle and got a nice fade all around. Now to control the fade amount of the mask, I only needed to use a power node right here. And this could control the fade, which was really nice. So I was very pleased with the end result and the shader was almost done. But when I went back to Unity, I noticed that the mask wasn't working properly. So then I realized that, yeah, probably I need to clamp the values that comes out of the 1 minus, to be between 0 and 1. And as soon as I saved this, it was working pretty well. So now I was able to keep on going on with my work and create some simple electric hits, some impacts basically. For example, if we look at this case, we can see that I used this electricity shader in the particle system and it's spawning two or three particles and they have a very short lifetime something really quick. I also chose the color in the particle system, thanks to the vertex node. And then to make it flash, I created this gradient in the color of a lifetime, where I have these gaps that gives the sensation that the electricity is blinking. I also used two curves to make it grow from big to small, nothing really special. And I also added a bit of rotation of a lifetime. And that's it. Then I complemented the wall effect with this beam that also has a short lifetime and goes from small to big and also added a few sparks that uses gravity and they have a strong start speed as well. And that's it, I think it's really useful to shader. For example, here's a purple one too. You can create a bunch of things with this, like some electricity loops basically a ball of electricity. This could be a projectile, for example, why not? Anyway, for those out there who likes to create things without any text, without any Photoshop or GIMP, this is a great example on how you can do it. And the amazing thing is that you can use this directly with any 3D model. Pretty cool, right? All you gotta do is add the shader as a second material. You can then change the color, even change the thickness of the electricity rays, play a little bit with the shader, change the amount as well. And as you can see, it can have a few purposes that can come in handy. So that's it, basically. This is available on my Patreon page, and I want to say thank you to all the patrons that supported me, but especially 
these following Super Mega Patrons, which are Goblin Black, James Finley, Jens Anderson, Joseph Feldman, Ruan Mediola, Ricky Klein, Shamsua Booker, Tirita, Warden Studios, Wing Yes, and Yayoni. And I'm sorry if I pronounced any of your names wrong. You guys are awesome and your support is very important, so thank you. So like I said in the beginning of the video, I recently published a Udemy course and I left a link in the description for those who are interested. And those lectures will take you from a beginner standpoint in visual effects to an intermediate level artist. And if you are interested, go check it out, I think it will help you to grow as a visual effects artist. So that's it guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one.